one of the things I've noticed in measuring this is that there is a, it's, uh, there is a, let's say, a fall off in, in dispersion angle as frequency goes up. Mm -hmm. And why does that happen? If, is it a function of the actual voice coil diameter or number of coils? Uh, what's yeah. happening in the panel? Because you said that at every frequency, the panel adapts to that new frequency yeah. in terms of its radiation pattern. And if, if, if it's actually collapsing, which is good mm -hmm. if frequency goes up because it's actually becoming a smaller radiating surface. Yes. Yep. Uh, therefore, should be maintaining its pattern. Yep. But is it a relationship between the frequency and the size of the coils or the number of coils, location? Yeah. So yeah. So that's or all of the above. Yeah. No. I mean. Yeah. So there's 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 a there's a few questions there. That I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover. No. That's great. Um, so yeah. Exactly as you say. We have if we consider a single single exciter, for example. So we know that the, the diameter of this coupling region where the energy is being imparted, in this case, is uh, 30, 32 millimeters. And what we find is, is that when the wavelength in the, the, the bending wavelength in the panel um, becomes of this order of magnitude, um, what we find is then, of course, the, the radiation zone can't really get any smaller. Mm. What you find is the region inside here becomes like a very efficient little... Uh, uh, kind of like an oil can, and and that radiates quite efficiently, and and you get a you can get a little peak on uh, on axis and moderately broad, um, but again with the right kind of uh, damping and stuff, you can actually spread that spread that energy and and use it to your advantage to some extent. We wouldn't always rely on that, mm. but it's a useful feature. Secondly, as as you as you mentioned, often we'll use multiple transducers for for higher power handling or better modal excitation, and then you have like a you could almost consider it as like a, a cluster zone where let's say you've got three of these coupler rings and almost like the zone that they occupy between the three of them is then your smallest uh, radiation zone. And again, it, it's important to remember that this, this initial region that we're talking about, this primary radiation center, is, is that. It's a primary radiation center because after that comes the modal energy. So when we look at an impulse response, um, you know, we see a, a defined spike uh, at the very beginning, and that is coming from the, that primary radiation center. And then what follows that is the diffuse tail. And again, a lot of people would look at that and go, well, that's, you know, there's a, is that ringing or does that sound like re reverberation? But of course, we, we know from um, psychoacoustics, we have something like the, the, called the precedence effect, which tells us that sounds arriving within a certain time are considered to come from and be a, uh, related to the initial signal. And this is a, a feature which is absolutely key to the understanding of a, of a DML because it explains how you get stereo imaging. Um, it explains how you get uh, the, the linear phase response. Um, it's, it's a really key component. And we see in the impulse response, your initial spike, your diffuse tail is well within the precedence window um, for, for speech, for music, all those sort of effects.